that beer? I hope so. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> She's trying to get her hair right, and I don't think it was working there. No, and I didn't realise he'd pressed the record button. Oh, of course I have, yes. <laughs> of course I have. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Carry on. Carry on. It's good to be here. Um, so, obviously, this is recorded, so you can pause us at any time you like if you want to go and have a cup of tea. Uh-huh. Um, at this point, we should be waiting to go on the boat, or we should be on the boat, hopefully, uh, to go our holidays. Um, so, not sure what's going on this coming week. I think the only thing that's on is the food bank. Should be. Mm-hmm. Wednesday and Friday, 9 to 12, and then the following Sunday, next Sunday, the meetings at 10.30 in the morning, and there will be something on at 6 o'clock, hopefully. There will be. <laughs> yes. Hoping for the next couple of weeks to be able to, to put something on. It might not be as long as we normally do, but there will be something. They're, they're planned. They're planned. Bruce has got them all planned. Yes, I'm planned. just going to do as I'm told. Well, apart from the couple of bits that you have to do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We can do that. <laughs> We're doing something a little bit different on the 30th. And what are we doing on the 23rd? Oh, that's that's planned. That's almost that's all... almost normal. Okay. For us. But on the 30th, there's something just a little bit different. Okay. Just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So, shall we begin? Yes. Good. Song number 45 to commence with. Psalm 45. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things have done, in whom his world rejoices, who from our mother's arms hath blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love, and still is ours today. Oh, song of praise to God to commence our time together this evening. We're going to come before God in prayer now, so let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you because we're able to spend this time together worshipping you, singing songs of praise to you, singing songs that remind us just how generous you have been to us and how kind you are to us each and every day of our lives. Lord God, we thank you that in all kinds of circumstances. You are there for us. When things are going well, you're there for us. When we find life a struggle, you're there for us. 
where we're enjoying everything that's happening round about us, you're there. And when we really are struggling to cope with even the smallest thing, we are not alone because you are there with us. Thank you, Lord God, that we can count on you in each and every circumstance of life. Lord, this evening we bring before you um, the people who particularly are on each of our minds this evening. Those who have suffered bereavement, Lord, we pray your comfort for them. Those who are struggling with life at the moment, Lord, may they know your peace. Those who are far away from you, Lord, may there be something that stirs in their heart that desire to come and know you once again. Lord, each and every one of us may be, be used by you for your kingdom's sake. Lord, bless this time that we spend together and may it bring glory and honour to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to turn in the songbook to song number 24. Psalm 24. God's love is as high as the heavens. God's love is as deep as the sea. God's love is for all kinds of sinners. God's love is sufficient for me. God's love is as high as the heavens. God's love is as deep as the sea. God's love is for all kinds of sinners. God's love is sufficient for me. God's love, God's love, God's love is sufficient for me, for me. God's love, God's love, God's love is sufficient for me. God's love is as wide as creation. God's love is as boundless and free. God's love, it can never be measured. God's love is sufficient for me. God's love, God's love, God's love is sufficient for me, for me. God's love, God's love, God's love is sufficient for me. God's love brought his son down from heaven. God's love let him die on the tree. God's love it has brought my salvation. God's love is sufficient for me. God's love, God's love, God's love is sufficient for me, for me. God's love, God's love, God's love is sufficient for me. We're going to share in our scripture reading for this evening, and it is taken mainly from Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50, commencing to read at verse 15, and then just one verse from Hebrews chapter 11. So Genesis chapter 50, commencing at verse 15. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended, to, intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. 
Joseph stayed in Egypt along with all his father's family. He lived 110 years and saw the third generation of, of Ephraim's children. Also, the children of Machir, son of Manasseh, were placed at birth on Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the land he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And Joseph made the sons of Israel swear on oath and said, God will surely come to your aid and then you must carry my bones up from this place. So Joseph died at the age of 110, and after they embalmed him, he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. And from Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to read verse 22. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Me again? You again? <laughs> need a drink of water. Song number 26. Song number 26. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, your mercies I see. All I have been at thy heart have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon and stars in their courses above. Joy with all nature in manifold witness to thy faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have been at thy heart of provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that Great is 
Um, so our scripture reading for this evening was um, the end of Joseph's life. But um, mm -hmm. if you go right back to the start of Joseph's life, mm -hmm. he born. was born. <laughs> he was the 11th son of 12 to Jacob. And right at the start of the, the story, um, there was a bit of sibling rivalry there. The brothers didn't really like Joseph because he was Jacob's favourite. He was the favourite. That was the problem. He was the favourite. So, were you the favourite? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mum, of course. Of course. Mum did a really good job of trying to cover that up by saying that we were all the favourite. But, of course... There is absolutely no doubt that I am the favourite second-born child. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, each of us are different. That's that's one of the, the really good things. Although there's similarities, um, each of us have our own nature. Uh, each of us had our own interests. There are a lot of overlap between those. But each of us, although part of a group were also um, very much individuals. For some folk, I think the fact that there were three brothers, they kind of, it was shorthand to just call us the Smith boys and then Fiona. But when people actually got to know us, they could tell there was actually quite a difference between each of us. So some things, I obviously would follow the interests of my older brother and try to um, emulate him or try and be allowed to do the things that he was allowed to do as soon as he was allowed to do them because he was doing the work. You know, I did talk about walking him to school and walking back before I was school age. Um, but there were a lot of things that I tried to emulate my, my big brother. So I followed him into Cubs and Scouts, um, learned to play a musical instrument, the same musical instrument that he was playing because there weren't enough instruments to go around the band at that point. So the two of us initially had to share a flugel horn and uh, neither of us play flugel horn now. <laughs> but I, I did eventually get into the band and so did Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? Oh, I was the oldest. I was the favourite, you know. <laughs> I, th I think we could get a quick answer to that. Your mother's still next door. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've got a younger brother. I do remember when we went to Canada and one of William's friends said, so you're William's younger sister. And I went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to which... He was very quickly, Steve was very quickly put right, she's my older sister. Yeah, four years. Three years and three months. <laughs> four months, even. <laughs> yeah. Um, growing up, well, it was just the two of us, but then we have cousins that are like siblings to us. Uh -huh. So we did lots of things together, um, especially the two younger ones, because there was three older, and Jim was four years, five years older than me. Um, and then I was me and then Ish was the next one to me. So Ishbal and Morig, Morig's the same age as William. We were, so we were like all together mm -hmm. um, and did lots of things together. Um, I think William sometimes maybe felt a bit out because he was the only boy amongst the younger ones. <laughs> and the girls all got the same outfits from Mama. She bought us all the same things. Do you think he would have wanted the same I don't outfit? think he would have. <laughs> I don't think you would have tried to make us all the same, but we were very different. Um, you don't have any pictures of William wearing the outfits? No, no. none whatsoever. Pity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been worth something. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, it, it was all very, very interesting growing up. Um, it was just me and William when mum and dad were officers, and then when we went back to Orkney, there was all of us together. Um, and we did everything together. We went to the army together. We all went to the same school. William and Morig were in the same class, um, which is sometimes good and sometimes not so good. Mm. <laughs> and I think part of it too is that, that we are all different. We all have different interests, although we do some of the same things. It's like 
we all played in the band, but we didn't uh -huh. have to share an instrument. That was good. Um, and did all those things together. So growing up, um, the things that were different about us compared to our siblings. Now, for me, I think I, I was the one who was interested in sports um, and the others were not particularly interested in sports. So that was great. I, I think that would get me out of my parents' hair quite um, for, for several hours. Give me a ball, go across to the park or down to the street. Um, the side street was nowhere near as busy now as it is now, um, way back then. And uh, give me a ball, and that was me quite happy for hours on end. But occasionally, um, Gordon particularly would join in uh, and try to amuse me. <laughs> I suppose that's what big brothers do, you know, try and keep the, the younger siblings mm. amused for a while. And I do, I do still uh, remember that day when we were playing football out the back garden. Mum was doing the dishes and uh, suddenly the ball was in the sink along <laughs> with the window. And to this day, Mum still blames me for it because I kicked the ball. But clearly it was Gordon's fault because he was the goalkeeper and he should have saved it. There we are. Yeah. What about you, anything? Well, I'm just trying to think. I mean, we all, when we lived in in the same street, we all lived in the same street because we lived with Mama and Dada. We, all, we just all went outside and played. There was no mobile phones or gadgets for you to sit and play. You went outside mm. and played. <laughs> I suppose we all did different things, but we did the same, like, there was a whole group of us who played kick the can up into the street and annoyed the neighbours. Um, the snow came, we went sledging down Mans Road and upset the taxi driver because he was needing to get his taxis out. Um, we went to the army together. We all played in the YP band. Um, we all sang in the singing what, company. What's the YP band? Young People's Band. Thank you. <laughs> and the singing company, the junior choir. And um, we all sang in that together and... I can just imagine all these young people with cloths. Cloths. <laughs> yes. Wipey, wipey, wipe, 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 Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> young people's band. Um, and we all kind of stood up for each other. Although sometimes we ever hated each other, you know, not in a horrible, nasty way, but think... Is there a nice way to hate people? Yes, there okay. is a nice way to hate people. You, can you do fell it with, out with each other, You perhaps. can do it in love. Yeah, we <laughs> fell out. But but if if somebody riled one and, you know, like William got put out of the YP band practice one night, so we, me and Ish Blamora just got up and walked out. We got locked out in the hall. <laughs> we never did it again. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, yeah, there was, there was always that... I don't know if there was jealousy, but there was the rivalry where you wanted to be better than the other one. But when it came to it, and I suppose you would be the same, that if somebody upset your sibling, you would stand up for them. Yeah. yeah. Most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Most yeah. Of the time, yeah. 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 I think so. Yeah. But it was never to the degree of what happened with Joseph where his brothers actually got rid of him. Well, no. We're no. going to think about that a wee bit. But, yeah. you know, sold him into the slavery and then went home and told the father that he died. <laughs> I don't think we quite went to that extent, did we? We didn't ever have a well in the back garden, so Alistair survived. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think about our kids, you know, I mean, all in Ireland. They they were quite close, weren't they? Oh, they are still there. And they close. still are. Yes. <laughs> Ola still likes to boss them. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. So, what kind of things did your brothers and sisters get up to with you? What kind of things did you did you have that rivalry, or did you always love each other? We we had a a club, a secret club. You did. Up in the attic. You did. Behind the walls. Are you telling your mother all this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Behind the walls. And it was kind of fibreboard initially that Dad had put up to make the walls. And we had we had candles. <laughs> we had candles that we would light to give us light. Not, not battery torches. No, no, we used candles. And we're still here. Absolutely. There you are. We had a gang in the shade. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. I don't know how we survived. Somehow we did. Anyway, there you are. There's got to be a confession in there at some Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. We're not going to share all our secrets with you. <laughs>
<laughs> Song number 40. <laughs> Leave God to order all thy ways, and hope in him whate'er betide. Thou'll find in him the evil days, thy all-sufficient strength and guide, who trusts in God's unchanging love, builds on the rock that naught can move. Leave God to order all thy ways, and hope in him whatever be tied. Thou'll find in him the evil days, thy all sufficient strength and guide. For trust in God's unchanging love, builds on the rock that not can move, builds on the rock that not can Keep still and wait in cheerful or content to take water his gracious will, his all discerning love has set. The debtor in most wants alone, tell him who choose us for his own, to him who choose us for his own. Sing, pray, and serve not from his face, but do thine own part faithfully. Trust his rich promises of grace, so shall they be fulfilled in thee. But never yet forsake a feet, there's so that trust it him indeed. There's so that trust it him indeed. So one of the other things um, from Joseph's life was that he was a bit of a dreamer. Mm -hmm. I think possibly in his early life, you know, when he, I think especially his dream about the sheaves of corn and, and them all boy bowing down and he kind of had likened that to his mm -hmm. brothers bowing down. I think that probably really was the final straw. But he had these dreams and these dreams had meaning. Now, I don't know if you've had any dreams lately or if there's dreams that you would... <laughs> I did have a dream lately. Yes, I did. Just a tiny little fragment of a dream, which it's, I probably... It will let you realise just how distressing the experience had been within this household. Oh dear. Just in the last few days, there was a food order placed to a... Portuguese restaurant with a kind of cockerel as the symbol. Yeah. 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 And uh, the order was placed online. Cameron went to go and pick it up, came back and started dishing it out, and some of the sides were missing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Chips and sweet corn. Sweet corn and garlic bread. Garlic bread, that's what it was missing from the order and of course that that brought great concern for those who were affected i wasn't affected I by wasn't it either. no <laughs> <laughs> um but that night i went to sleep and i don't really remember a great deal about any of the the dreams that i have normally but i did remember looking out the window and seeing on the lawn at the front of the house a package which had the missing food in it oh but it was a dream okay. because i couldn't get to any of the front rooms at night no no, yes, no. the house was full yeah and we're in the back we're bedroom back. Yeah. yeah yeah so there you are that was in my dream i mean <laughs> Totally bizarre, but obviously other people in the house have been so badly impacted yeah. by not getting their sweet corn or whatever <laughs> that that came into my dream. Yeah, I had a, I can't even remember what what the dream was, but it must have been scary because I remember waking up thinking, oh, I don't think I want to go back to sleep in case I have that dream again. But I can't think what it was. I just know there was people. I think they were chasing me. Is that right? <laughs> and there were scary people. <laughs> I can't even remember what it was, but I just remember waking up and thinking, I really don't want to go back to sleep because I really don't want to have to face that again, but I can't remember uh -huh. what it was. <laughs> yeah. 
dreams. You see, now, what I try to do is manipulate the dreams. Okay. I don't know if anybody else does that. When you're having a dream about something that, for me, quite often, it's work. Yeah. I mean, I don't normally, but every now and then I, I get this um, three or four days, perhaps, where work is going on in my head at night. And I, you know, I don't get paid any overtime for working in my sleep. But every now and then it does happen and maybe there's been a stressful situation and that comes up in my dreams. So, you know, the last time that that happened, I was dreaming about grandchildren. Okay. That was that was how I got over that. I, I woke up and I thought, I really do not want to spend the rest of the night dreaming about that situation. I'm gonna I'm gonna concentrate on the laughing faces of Jack and Lila of tickling uh, Seth uh, and all that kind of fun and that kind of, yeah. it worked for most of the time actually yeah and that, was, that was a fun dream I'm yeah. trying to think was it before Ola's wedding there was disasters I kept I don't think it was before Erlen's wedding I think it was before Ola's wedding where something happened and I thought no I can't have this anymore I'm sure it was Ola's wedding there was something anyway some wedding and I can only think it was that one. I don't think it was Erlen's wedding because I don't remember having any kind of panic. So you say no, this wedding was a disaster? No, it wasn't a disaster, but just something you happened. You don't like Cameron? <laughs> Is that what you're saying? No, stop. Stop putting words in my mouth. It you was... heard it here first. <laughs> it was like, I really don't think I want this to happen. Or oh. I know the dream. I know the dream that, that really, really got me was um, when we were in Stornoway. And it was our first Christmas there. And when I was there, I had to do a Christmas dinner for the lunch club. <laughs> yes. And a Christmas dinner for the core. Now, the, the yes. lunch club Christmas dinner, I can't even remember if they got a choice. I think it was just turkey. But the core Christmas dinner, they got a choice of roast beef, turkey, or I think it was a vegetarian option. Um, and I remember before the lunch club one, um, it's like... I've cooked Christmas dinner before, but it's for however many, mm -hmm. you know, and I cooked the whole Christmas dinner in my dream. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I woke up, I realised that in reality, I had to do it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I cooked the whole thing. Well, it Not should have been it was... perfect because you, you'd had a trial run well, already. It should have been, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's all sorts of things that can come up in our dreams. And, you know, I've shared a few of those recently as well. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to go over the, the sky bridge that wasn't there that wasn't at there. the time. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If, I, I think I shared the one about flying back and forward. Did. Yeah. Across the living room. I had a fever at the time. <laughs> um, so I don't normally fly back and forwards across the living room. That, that was utterly bizarre. I had to do it so many times or, or something bad was going to happen that I can't remember what, what, what bad was supposed to happen. Yeah. It didn't happen yeah. anyway. And I got better. Maybe yeah. that was the bad thing. <laughs> I got better. Yeah. So there are so many things that we can dream about, aren't there? Yeah. Sometimes there may be a meaning to it and sometimes there might not be. Yeah. Here we are. Okay, Another song? Yeah. One more song just now. Song number 378. Song number 378. Lord, I come before your throne of grace. I find rest in your presence and fullness of joy. In worship and wonder I behold your face, singing, What a faithful God have I. Lord, I come before your throne of grace. I find rest in your presence and fullness of joy. In worship and wonder I behold your face. Singing, what a faithful God have I. That is... It's a bit low. <laughs> Just a bit, because I'm not going to get the chorus. <laughs> I'm not going to put it right up because I'll never get the high notes. It's not often you get us both singing at the, the same pitch. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Lord, I come before your throne of grace. I find 
series of Men of Faith. We've looked at Enoch, we've looked at Noah, uh, last week we looked at Abraham and this evening we look at Joseph. So Joseph, as I've said, he was the 11th son of 12 sons of Jacob. He was Jacob's favourite son. Jacob gave him the most beautiful, colourful coat um, and coat with baggy sleeves. That's it. And because of this, he was detested by his brothers. It was almost as if Joseph was the most wonderful son. Um, but of course, Joseph's mother was Rebecca, who was Jacob's favourite wife. I think he had more than one wife. So, um, oh, right, it's not to, allowed. Uh, no, it's not allowed. Oh, okay. So as a youngster, Joseph was, um, he was confident. Um, his natural self-assurance, his increase. It will increase by being J Jacob's favourite son and by knowing God's design on his life, he was unbearable to his ten older brothers who eventually conspired against him. Um, they all went out one day. They really, I think this was the day when, as I said earlier, he had the dream about the, the sheaves of corn and the other 11 brothers bowing down to him and that's how he interpreted it. Joseph had the dreams and he interpreted them and I really think that that was the breaking point. I mm. don't think they could take any more. So they put him in a well and then they saw a group of travellers coming by and they sold him to these Egyptians and uh, they, I think they killed a ram and put the blood on the coat and took it back to the father and said that Joseph had been killed. So they sold Joseph into slavery and they went home and told Jacob that Joseph was dead. But this self-assurance moulded by pain and combined with a personal knowledge of God allowed Joseph to survive and to prosper. Where most would have failed, he added quiet wisdom to his confidence and he won the hearts of everyone he met. Um, and in his life, he met various people. 
um, he was, because of his dreams and he was able to interpret the dreams, he was an aide to Potiphar. He was accused of having an affair with Potiphar's wife, so he was thrown into jail. There he met a baker and a candlestick maker, mm. I always want to say. King Stuart, wasn't it? King Stuart. And they both had dreams. Um, and they, he was able to interpret their dreams. He, he, you know, he was able to tell them, this is what I think this is about. Um, and it was quite a while later that um, the king had been having dreams. And these men remembered Joseph in jail. And uh, Joseph was able to interpret uh, the dream of Pharaoh. So he, he met Potiphar. He met the jailer. He met other prisoners. He met the king. And after many years he met his ten brothers again. But in this reading from Genesis, we see it, it, it's getting towards the end of Joseph's life and uh, he's reunited with these brothers. Um, and we read that Jace, Joseph's brothers were quite afraid of him because they knew that they had done wrong um, in their sight. Now Jacob was dead. The brothers expected revenge from Joseph, you know, they thought, well, you know, we really weren't a very nice to him and he's mm. going to get his own back on us. Could he really forgive them for selling them him into slavery? But to their surprise, Joseph not only forgave them, but he offered to care for them and their families. Joseph's forgiveness was complete and he demonstrates how God graciously accepts us, even though we don't always deserve that love. We've got much to learn. Um, from Joseph's life. His brothers, they may well have despised him, but God loved him. And in whatever situation Joseph found himself in, God was able to use him in that situation. Joseph rose to power from slave to ruler of Egypt. He was known for his personal integrity. He was a man of spiritual sensitivity and he prepared a nation to survive a famine. And God was able to use Joseph. The one dream that he had was about the, the the fat cows and the skinny cows and how the skinny cows ate the fat cows but didn't become fat. Uh, and Joseph interpreted that about the famine that was going to come on the land. And then that way they were able to prepare so that they had enough um, to eat in the years of famine. So Joseph was able to interpret those dreams for Pharaoh. You know, in, in his time when he was in prison, Joseph could have wallowed in self-pity, but he picked himself up and he used each, each situation in his life to work for God. We're reminded here in Joseph's life that what matters most is not so much the events or circumstances of life, but our response to them. Joseph could have just wallowed in his own self-pity, but he was able to use the situations that he found himself in. And we are reminded that with God's help, any situation can be used for good, even when others have intended it for evil. Because of his faithfulness to God, Joseph was given that high ranking position in Egypt. And although he could have used that position to build a personal empire, he remembered God's promises to Abraham. And Joseph was faithful to that promise. Faith means that we trust in God and we do what God wants us to do, regardless of where we find ourselves in, whatever situation we might find ourselves in. Perhaps there are things in Joseph's life that we can each identify with. But as we read the story of Joseph, we need to note that in each case, we see what Joseph did in each situation. His positive response transformed each step back into a step forward. He didn't spend time with thinking, well, why? Why did my brothers throw me into the pitch? Why, you know, was I not believed, you know, because um, he was falsely imprisoned? You know, why didn't people believe me? Um, so he, he didn't spend time thinking why. His approach was, what will I do now? And those who saw his life were aware that wherever Joseph went and whatever Joseph did, God was with him. I hope and pray for each one of us that whatever situation we might find ourselves in, we don't ask why, but we would ask, what will I do now? What will the outcome be? How can I be a positive influence in this situation? And we need to be aware that wherever we find ourselves, 
God's presence is with us every step of the way. We just need to remain faithful to God in every situation. Joseph remained faithful to God all throughout his life um, and uh, he didn't bear any grudges to his brothers. He showed love because God was his guide and he was faithful in his life. And it reminds us that we too need to be faithful to God wherever we might find ourselves, wherever we might do. We need to trust God and to know that he will be with us every step of the way. We're going to turn in conclusion to song number 522. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Saviour. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the hurling storms of doubt and fear are still. By the living word of God I shall be there, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Saviour. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ my Lord, bound to Him eternally, my love's strong God, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Saviour, standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises I cannot fail Listening every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Saviour as my all in all Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God, my Saviour, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I now can see, perfect present cleansing in the blood for me. Standing in the liberty that Christ makes free. Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Saviour Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Thank you for joining with us again this evening and we pray that you'll have a good week and we look forward to sharing with you again at the same time mm -hmm. next Sunday evening. We're going to just share in our benediction together. And so we pray, go in peace. May God protect you. May God show you the way. May God unfold to you the riches of this day, giving peace to all that worries or hinders you today and evermore. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining with us this evening. We pray indeed that uh, 
it will be a service that you've enjoyed, it's something to help you, something to make you think, and something to look forward to in this coming week. Good night, and God bless you. God bless.